Hello, everyone. Welcome. I think we are live. Let us know if you can see us and hear us OK. I think it's all good. OK, excellent. So um, I am really happy to be doing this chat with uh, the amazing Leo Abrahams. Um, if you don't know who Leo is, well, he's what I call a superman, <laughs> super producer. He's worked with legends and people who I respect so much, like uh, Brian Eno. I didn't know you you worked with Imogen Heap until yesterday. I was like, oh my gosh, I love Imogen Heap. Oh, yeah. um, you know, he recorded guitar. He's also a guitarist as well as being a producer and he works with all sorts of genres from Adele to <laughs> John Hopkins to it's extremely varied and, and amazing. So welcome, Leah. Thank you so much for hopping on to talk to me today. That's a pleasure. Nice to see you. Um, I can't hear you for some reason. I think I am unmuted. Can you hear me now? Oh, wait, 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 wait. No, no, I think I muted myself. Okay. No, I can. All right. So welcome, Leo. Thank you so much for being with us. Um Thank you. Yeah. I'm um, I mean I've been looking forward for this to this for a while. I mean, today we're just going to talk about the process of making, finding home records, which we are putting the last touches on as we speak. <laughs> um, so, tell me, have you had any experience working with Arabic um, instruments, Arabic musicians, and if so, what was the closest thing to that? Uh -huh. I was racking my brains. I don't think I ever have worked on Arabic music or with Arabic musicians, but the, the closest that I've come is my interest in um, traditional music from Tajikistan. Right. So very, very old uh, Persian music, which is it has roots in Zoroastrian um, ceremonies and things like that. Right. So I actually traveled there a few years ago and met some of the musicians and I also mixed some recordings that a friend of mine, fantastic musician called Lou Edmonds, had made field recordings over there. Right. I mean, it's very different, but I think there's some sort of common, there's some sort of overlap there. Yeah. But, um, well, without getting too far into it, there's two forms, there's two categories of music. One of them is related to uh, Shash Makom, which is sort of the classical tradition, if you like. Yeah. And the other one is the more ritual type music um which is a lot about ecstatic poetry and that's the type that i uh worked with beautiful so, um anyway it's, it's as i said to you before it's just a real joy to work on this project and every time i open up the session i feel like oh, i'm so lucky to oh. hear in front of the speakers and be listening to this music honestly it's just so great yeah that's what i got into music for thank you thank you i mean i feel always so lucky that i mean always every single time you know because things can can it's a lot <laughs> making a record is, is a lot of detail and um and every time i get stressed i think oh my god thank god i have leo <laughs> <laughs> every single time this like oh thank god i have leo <laughs> so well, I, I have i'll wait until this is all over and then i'll tell you what i all the things i was worrying about in front <laughs> Okay, I look forward to that chat. <laughs> well, you won't hear any of that. We're just gonna um, talk about the the, the 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 before process and the mm. the process that we're in the middle of now. So we spend four days together in Wiltshire Music Centre where we recorded the bulk mm. of the album, and then we spend some days in your beautiful studio where you're talking to me from now, mm. um, just adding some last stitches um was there anything unique about the process did anything stick out to you any particular impressions you had throughout the process well a lot of the time in producing um non non-classical music i mean i hesitate to categorize music as classical fully but it's it's very much to do with performance. And yeah. although in a rock record, for example, it's, it's also a lot of the time about performance, of course, it's also somewhat about artifice and mm. creating an impression, sometimes maybe the impression of a live gig through artificial means. Yeah. And um, 
in electronic music or experimental music, which isn't performed, then it's all artifice in a way. The creation is in is in the studio. Yeah. So with your music, the the task was much more similar to when I've produced classical music, which is you're interested in capturing a moment and a performance in full, even though there's there can be a lot of editing involved and stuff like that. It's it it lives or dies by what's happening in that moment between all the people. Yeah. Um, and that was really exciting because, I mean, sometimes as a producer, you have to end up covering for people a little bit. Yeah. Um, and there was none of that here. Everyone who played on it's a virtuoso. So it's sort of a luxury. I could have just sat back and had a glass of wine while everyone, <laughs> all the masters got on with it. Um, so from that perspective, it was a, a real, a real joy to work on it just because the ingredients are so good. Um, I didn't actually, I didn't have to, to make anything, did I? I just had to record what you were doing. Well, you did add a lot of amazing stuff at the end. I mean, I am in the process of listening to the last mixes that Leo has sent me. And there are some moments I'm like, oh my God, this is so good. Um, so, I mean, obviously it's it's such a journey making a record. You know, just like you you write it in, I wrote, I wrote it in my bedroom. <laughs> and, and then the musicians come and then there's another layer. And then you go in, in, in the studio setup it's just even another layer it's the people and the ambience and just being in a container and then with you it's just another layer it's such a really amazing journey how it morphs and and matures into this being um but yeah i mean it was yeah it's a, it's a, it's a big process it always is a big process but with with this project, again, another thing that distinguished it was that it was the music was complete when, by the time I got involved, and it just right. sort of had to be captured or or rendered in a certain way. Yeah. But very very often, um, when you start producing a record, a lot of it is unfinished. Sometimes. Right. Really. That's and interesting. You on, you know, you're adding parts. You're coming up with parts. The studio becomes an instrument. All this kind of thing. So it felt like I only came in at the very end of the album making process, um, which again, in some respects is quite a luxurious thing <laughs> for me. Right. Um, it was really interesting hearing your solo show recently though, because when yeah. you found the pieces from the album, I just could not unhear all the other <laughs> I almost couldn't experience that performance in a, um, in a, in a full way because I was just hearing all the other parts. Yes. Absolutely. It's an amazing journey. It's just like you just see, is it, I don't know if it's the same for you. Like, I don't know if it's production is the same approach to composing, like, and also you're a composer, of course. Um, but you do you like just you know you take you have the 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 hunt the next mile clear and the rest is fog <laughs> and you sort of have to explore your way through it. Yeah, it's Is interesting because it? I, I, to me, everything about your music and project was so clear. Um, it's interesting to hear you say that because for, for me, the only thing that wasn't clear was how, uh, how it should actually sound at the end. Mm. Um, because there, there are choices to make about how purely classical it should sound versus are you allowed reverb, are you allowed a bit of delay, you know? Yeah in this world it's a bit like in a film they talk about the story world yeah I think the sound of a record is like that yeah. if you tip too far over into something that's um got too thick of a veneer or too stylized it can begin to sound like a pastiche because i don't know about you but we all have these things i guess that are in our heads as great sounding music that it's our influences i suppose yeah and a lot of that for me is is um 60s psychedelic Turkish music and stuff yeah. like that. and your instrument just it's it's it sounds fantastic when you do things to it that bring it a bit into that world yeah obviously you can't go too far because it's so much about detail so that sort of thing that is the fog for me that I think we I think we got there intuitively yeah yeah absolutely I mean it has to do with with really you because you kept telling me my other 90% of the work needs to be done 
before you have to be absolutely rehearsed I think mm. I was I was I was terrified of just messing things up and I sort of was <laughs> you know I just sort of I don't know over prepared if such a thing exists <laughs> but yeah that's yeah, interesting for you to hear to hear your perspective on that well it, I hope I, I hope you didn't feel I was I was uh you know drilling it too much no never yeah. never it never is, never it is true it's just amazing how you just hemorrhage time once you start recording and um I don't know where the time goes but we had that experience didn't we we thought we can record two two pieces a day yeah notwithstanding the fact that some of your pieces are 10 minutes long exactly <laughs> um but really it's about knowing that you have enough time to do it enough times mm. that every section you know that you're going to get every section fantastic it's not always about you have to get the take from start to finish although sometimes that happens it's more about giving yourself enough time to uh try you know try things different ways take a few stabs at it and hopefully not feel too stressed out but it's a real as you know as a performer i mean i'm not really a performer i get too anxious but it's a fine line between the right amount of pressure that focuses you and then just feeling like you're overwhelmed absolutely and that is the in a way the producer's job i think is to keep the artist on the right side of that line yeah and you did that so brilliantly i mean because you know i'm in the thick of it and i lost perspective so many times i'm like i sort of almost lost my bearings in the tempo um mm. you know with like s s several details and you just like you have been such a calm gentle grounding presence i'm like this needs tending to and it was as you said a real luxury to have the time because we had eight pieces um and uh yeah we had four days and again this is just mm. again thanks to Walter Music Center for oh, yeah, that so. enormous <laughs> gift that is that uh, I am forever grateful for so yeah and Dan yeah. was just amazing the, the um engineer house engineer absolutely so yeah that was that was just a joy the room sounded great you yeah know, it, was, it was a pleasure wasn't it it was it was and i mean i i finding home when i thought about it i thought i'm going to contact all the venues that i feel home with mm. which is why Walter music center have i mean they're an amazing venue and they have a beautiful crowd you know but they have a heart <laughs> you know like yeah. the organizers just want to do good things in the world and and I was always really touched by how welcoming they were they were like I really want to make sure that you're comfortable and I really want to make sure that the sound is right and the things are right for you and so attuned and so sensitive so that's why I chose them and then when they said they're going to be the home of Finding Home it was just amazing yes yes absolutely so I am curious how would you best describe the style or the genre of Finding Home you touched on it but how would you say oh god i don't <laughs> i don't really know if i'm qualified to do that just um, in your own opinion i mean i would call it okay i'll have a go <laughs> i would call it classical arabic music with a an ecm element oh um, because there are obviously aspects of improvisation not just mm. the improvisation but uh um oh god what do you call it not cadenzas but you know what what do you call it when you have like a prelude to a piece and it's improvised well that seem so it's right, improvisation okay. yes yeah so there's an i didn't know that term but there is that's quite a common feature of of well all music really isn't it yeah um, but with but within the pieces there are sometimes improvisatory sections like the piano solos and stuff like that so yeah that's it it's it's written music with improvisation in with a little bit of a nod towards jazz but it certainly isn't jazz i wouldn't use the j word <laughs> okay well I, I pretty much like that um thank you um so when i first approached you which mm. is ages ago <laughs> um you mentioned to me that the role of a producer mm. is to do what the artist can't do how yeah. did that fit in with the, with the record we touched upon it but then if we can just revisit well it. i suppose the obvious part is the the technical things mm. I mean, sometimes 
the name for someone who just does technical things, I guess, is engineer rather than producer. Yeah. So where does an engineer become a producer? I think it's it's kind of what we talked about earlier, making some decisions about what the overall world of the sound should be. Yes. And stopping everyone going nuts. <laughs> <laughs> well, you have been certainly oneself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah um yeah it was again it was yeah again you were like again everybody who I worked with but particularly you because you're such you're such a key figure in this and and I, I look up to you and respect you so much and I learned so much from you in the process you know when I went to record um um because we had trio stuff um three tracks uh, and we, we I recorded it in uh, Oprah North and uh, I was telling myself all the time I was like okay but Leo's not here but I'm going to channel the, the inner Leo <laughs> just Leo's here guiding me so and tr really truly your voice Good. was guiding me oh, through it so you know? <laughs> really thanks yeah yeah absolutely thanks to you so it was a truly eye-opener for me in so many ways because um Yes, yeah. so nice, but I really, I felt like I wasn't really doing very much or anything. You were doing so much. But sometimes it's about just being there. And I guess a little bit like, I imagine when you're playing, you're not analysing everything. You just sort of, a part of it is instinctive. Absolutely. And, you know, I think a lot of people could have done my job, but I think whatever that is, is instinctive. And um, yeah, I, it, it also I must say, I think it really helps me as a producer also being a musician mm. and understanding what it's like on the other side of the glass if you know what I mean yeah I think that that having that insight um is really valuable it helps you to to understand what a musician is going through and what might help them and so and stuff like that you know? yeah so. yeah absolutely I mean because in so many times I think I sometimes go into a, a trance when I play and I'm like, I, I can't, as you said, I can't analyze, you know, I'm just not in a, in an analytical <laughs> um, mm. mind frame, just like, um, I'm just so immersed in the music. I, I just will go like, what just happened? Well, that's yeah. actually, that's a really big part of it. <laughs> um, I think we were touching on it earlier. It's, it's, let, it's creating the, conditions that let musicians not worry about everything and there was a lot of pressure on you not just as a player but you were bloody making the lunch half the time <laughs> well you know you'd organized a lot of stuff and it was it was a lot on your shoulders so I mean how you managed to get in the zone and give what you gave is pretty extraordinary so oh thank you that means a lot yeah it was quite a lot of responsibility because this is why I was like freaking out that I'm going to mess up everything you know to be honest with you because I was like oh my gosh I have to make sure they're eating everybody's happy everybody's looked after the music yeah. rehearsal <laughs> train yeah, yeah. <laughs> and be a good you know performer and be censored so it was yeah. it was a lot but yeah it was that's why again I am so grateful to have so many um I mean not only amazing in trade but Everybody who worked on this record is is so kind hearted, and mm. and lovely as a person, um, and I think that that gentleness and that kindness is is all part of the music. It's all part of 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 the of of the vibe, you know, of of this record. So, yeah, yeah. I was always very grateful for that in the crunch moments, <laughs> to to be surrounded by that by that. Um, gentle kind warm bubble yeah, yeah. well you, that is what you attract there's yeah. you, you can you can always it's always interesting seeing what people's teams are like you know yeah when you go yeah because you don't really um you don't often get to know an artist very well like if i'm playing guitar for somebody you're sort of in and out yes but you can often tell quite a lot about them from the sort of people that they hire Oh, that right they're... interesting yeah. i mean usually ah. everyone's very nice don't get me wrong but yeah it's it's what you naturally attract isn't it yes absolutely yeah well i had the best team so i am 
very very grateful for that so again thank you and also i need to say thank you because i mean i was going to say that in the end but just because we mentioned it it's just when things didn't work out with funding um mm. people think that you know it's all handed to me on a plate of gold but it did not it's just it was such a lengthy process and i missed a teeny tiny detail that nobody saw coming <laughs> um therefore i didn't get it in the first time and everybody was like oh, so we're not gonna record <laughs> you know it's not happening um and i was genuinely thinking that you're just gonna say okay i'm sorry i can't do it i was genuinely worried that you're gonna let go of the whole thing but you did not you said in the most gentle way you said i uh, don't worry i'm gonna make myself available for you and it's all gonna be fine and you don't know how much i appreciated that oh I just have to say that that's really kind thank you well i mean yeah thank you but from my perspective i just wasn't gonna let anything stop me from working on this music oh so, uh, that a lot. you know it wasn't entirely altruistic i also wanted to <laughs> <laughs> well yeah i don't know that was but yeah that meant a lot to me so again mm. thank you um so my word for this year is yes. magic right. well it's a lot of it was not well it's magic but it's, it's magic with a lot of work but I have a question for you. In, in a few words, as somebody who's worked with an infinite amount of infinite different types of artists, genres, styles, what creates magic in a record? Uh, there's just, a. I think there's a lot of different ways to answer that question, but from a performance perspective, I think the most exciting um, thing that you can hear coming through the speakers is a really great musician in danger. <laughs> because the, the way, particularly in improvisation, I mean, you've got to be on the edge. Yeah. And um, capturing that. Uh, the, the, the thing is, one of these cliche lessons that they that you get told at engineering school or whatever, not that I went to engineering school, but is always be in record. It didn't used to be like that with tape, but with digital, you might as well always be in record. Because yeah. so, so often the magic happens before you're, you think you're recording. It's like the first take. Mm. And when, when I'm doing guitar sessions, I always get them to record the first take before I've even heard the song, because things just happen that have a certain energy and you can't yeah. repeat it. So I think that is magic, really. It's particularly in, in music like yours that, as we were saying, is so performance-based, even though it's composed. Um, it's about capturing a moment of truth and some bit of, you know, not, of just being on the edge. I mean, in a, in a sense, I think as a musician, you always have to put yourself on the edge because you're trying to bring truth into whatever you're playing mm. not consciously but yet you commit to the emotion of the part mm. and it's possible to get by without doing that but you can tell pretty easily i think when it's that, when it's purely technical yeah but if you're in that state and you're you're not a hundred percent um all over it it's probably going to be good it's worth it's worth having a few um imperfections to get that energy because i for me it makes it feel like you've written it in that moment then ah. that's, that's how it should feel to me that's what i like to hear and oh, a lot of the time when i'm producing bands um i end up using quite a lot of their demo parts for guitars because now everyone records themselves at home and it's got that energy of like oh wow the guy was writing it as he was doing this yeah i want to hear that i don't want to hear it after he's practiced it much um, so we could, you know, we'll reamp it or reprocess it so that it sounds better. Right. The fundamental thing in there. If I hear it and I believe it, why do it again? Um, but that's, I don't think everybody feels like that. That's my attitude. It has to feel true and have a kind of newbornness to it. Beautiful. Thank you. So, Lastly, Leo, 
Yes. What do you say to everybody who is on the, you know, considering supporting the Finding Home tour and record? Um, what do you say to them? Uh, thank you for considering it. And now please <laughs> act on it. <laughs> right, I mean, uh, obviously, well, I, like I said, I would have done anything to be part of this project. I truly think it's great, great music or almost important music. And sometimes when you're handling something really precious, as a producer, it can kind of freak you out. Like, oh, I can't <laughs> screw this up because it's really good. Um, but it is totally, I mean, it's, it diminishes it to say that it's worthy of everybody's support. It, it has to have everybody's support and uh, get out into the world and um, needs to be heard. Yeah. And also, I know that you've probably done a lot of other stuff around other aspects of this, and this is about the record, but obviously I'm aware of, of the, other, the other aspects of this project, and I can't think of a more worthy, a more worthy uh, thing to be part of. So I hope everybody feels like that. Thank you. Thank you so much, Leo. Well, um, Leo, thank you so, so much. It has been a true pleasure and an honour to um be Love working that. with you yeah. Yeah, <laughs> um and yeah thank you for your time i know you're in the middle of a session so um everybody if you want to support this project it's up it still has you know three weeks to go so get on kickstarter and do it um and again thank you so so much leo for everything and um yeah and i'll see you soon i will yes, email soon about the mixes so exactly i look forward to it Thank you so much for tuning, everybody. Um, have a beautiful day, night, whatever you are, and see you soon. Bye-bye.